What's really critical for us, we can get so much information from the Met Office website, which is great. They've now put spot winds on for various locations around the UK where ballooning activity takes place. And that's great, but that comes off the computer model. And what's critical for us to really hone that in is to talk to a forecaster um, each day. And we get really a micro forecast. And they tell us, you know, if it's Bristol or Bath or maybe South Wales, and each one has got their own particular um, problems or benefits. Um, we get the sea breezes in Bristol, we get the mountain effect in, in Wales, um, we can get very often the south coast sea breezes coming up um, from the south coast that will get into Bath. So we sort of look at the general overview of the situation, think yes it looks like it, it's a goer and then get a really micro weather forecast and balloonists all around the country do that. A really interesting flight, so, or interesting Met, and I'm passionate about the Met, um, is we did a, a film um, for the BBC recently from Newbury, and it was to replicate a flight by a chap called Reverend Bailey, who used to fly balloons in the late 1800s. And he was gas balloons, and really developed the first hot air balloon burner, of which uh, a lady called Jenny D'Alton still has that original burner. And uh, he was a photographer as well, and he took pictures of Newbury in the late 1800s and for the BBC they wanted to replicate one of his flights and the problem was that the pictures he had were sort of staggered around Newbury, Newbury and where he filled his gas bloom from was uh, a gas tank that's still there on the edge of Newbury Racecourse. So getting weather for that as opposed to doing say three or four flights um, it's really critical that we get weather and maybe 500 foot levels and that's when the guys, the forecasters and girls of course and some of the girls are better than the guys and they give us a really good split of winds and I know okay they can't be accurate to one or two degrees but but they really do work it for us and uh, nine times out of ten you can almost put your money on what they say will happen it may be a few hundred feet out or it may be a few degrees out but we can compensate that and we almost did a complete dog leg around Newby took off from where we said we were going to take off from obviously and then flew the whole dog leg by adjusting our altitude by anything up to 3,000 feet to move to the next point drop back down again do the filming and then perhaps drop lower to go to the left, higher to the right, which is generally what happens, and uh, landed right just next to the gas tank. So that's when, when we really need some accurate stuff because calling film crews out, directors um, and presenters, is a lot of money, so we want to make sure we get it right. So the big fiesta, the Bristol Bloom Fiesta, and it's the Astra International Bloom Fiesta this year in 2010 on the 12th to the 15th of August. Absolutely critical met we need for that. We've got 140 balloons taken off from Ashton Court um, and to stick 140 balloons in the air with Bristol Air Airport so close, we have to be absolutely certain that we don't mess up Bristol Airport, we don't send them out to the west, out to the coast, at Avonmouth or whatever. So the Met Office play a crucial part in our planning of the Fiesta and I was flight, I've been flight director for the last 10 years and on the flying committee. So we get the forecast from the Met Office, we sit there, plot the various routes, tracks, heights, etc. We then speak to air traffic to let them know what we feel we're going to do and we rely on the, the Met Office totally for that information. Um, they give us their boundaries um, to work to and then we do a, a pilot's briefing and hopefully set them all off. What we love is um, a nice westerly um, grading about 10 to 15 knots, calmish on the surface, maybe a bit of sea breeze comes in in the afternoon or anything round to a nice slow easterly where we can go down the Nelsey Valley but we're affected in Bristol by so many things. We've got the Mendips, we've got the Welsh Mountains, we've got the Bristol Channel um, and they're all localised effects but we really do have to get it right and thank you Med Office you help us.